city holds many memories for me of cafes, of music, of love, and of death. As I picked myself up, all I could hear was the ceaseless drone of traffic. Life went on around me, but the explosion was to change my life forever. The leading article referred to the visit of a Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. That was the only news story. The rest was rumor, gossip, and sensationalism. Then I noticed the writing at the foot of the page. It read Salah ed din 1345. I tried not to meet his stare as I searched the dead man's pockets. No wallet, no papers, no credit cards. The guy's past was a blank page. How much vodka did I drink? Oh, no, don't tell me. What is your name, Sherry? George Stobart, ma'am. Oh, American. She asked the question quite innocently, but I could sense her reserve. It was something which seemed to afflict all Europeans. You look like you could use a little help. I could use a little drink. I feel sick, dizzy, and bruised. I don't even remember the party. Just relax and take it easy. You've been knocked out. You don't say. What happened? There's been an explosion. You should try not to move. Are you a doctor? 
No, but I used to play hospitals when I was a kid. Can you remember anything at all? No. I need a drink. Pour me a brandy. You could be in shock. No alcohol. What about the old man? Is he dead? Yes, he is. Oh, mon dieu. Right there. Oh, don't shoot. I'm innocent. I'm an American. Can't make up your mind, huh? I demand to see the American consul. Drop your weapons and get down on the ground. Put that thing away, Sergeant Moo. I apologize, monsieur, but I cannot permit you to leave. Am I under arrest? Ah, uh, no. I would simply like to ask you some questions. En avant, to the cafe, march. What a mess! This bombing is an outrage, is it not? Stop that, monsieur! Stop holding your breath at once! Has it occurred to you that he may be dead, Mo? Oui, monsieur, but I prefer to look on the bright side. Besides, I recall a case where the killer escaped by feigning death. However, in this case, the man is quite dead. Clearly, the killer knew of his presence and... How many times have I warned you about premature extrapolation? All we know is that he is dead. It seemed reasonable to assume... A great detective assumes nothing. Take Maigret, for instance. But, but he was a fictitious character, monsieur. Why, he was no more real than Poirot or Tintin. That's different, Moo. They were comedy Belgians. Anyway, it is unlikely that even you will learn much from talking to the dead. Examine the girl and take her statement, if you can. Et maintenant, to business. Your name, please? George Stobart. I'm from California. And what brings you to Paris, Monsieur Stobart? Travel. I'm touring Europe. You chose well. The city is most beautiful at this time of year, no? Uh, yeah. I guess so. Apart from the bomb blasts. Were you in the vicinity of the cafe at the time of the explosion? Yeah, I was sitting out on the sidewalk. I was lucky I wasn't killed. The inspector passed over my remark with no reaction. Did you see the deceased enter the cafe? Yes, I did. Was he alone? Uh, yeah. And did he say anything to you? No. He was more interested in the waitress. Did you see anyone else in the cafe? Yeah, there was a guy dressed as a clown. He was carrying an accordion. An accordion? Bon, the picture is forming in my mind, and it is not a pretty one. Is the girl all right, Moo? She'll leave. She confirms the American statement. A clown with an accordion, no doubt an elaborate and eccentric disguise. Very well. Eh bien, I have heard enough. What do you mean? I am satisfied that you know nothing. You may leave. I hope this little incident does not spoil the rest of your vacation. What about my personal safety? Can't you at least give me some advice? What can I say? Stay alert and look out for suspicious characters. And don't cross the road until the little man shows green. 
Great advice. I honestly believe you are in no danger, monsieur. Should you remember anything of importance, please contact me. My card. Thanks. That is all. You may go. There's not much to go on, monsieur. On the surface, no. But what lurks inside the subconscious? If the door can only be opened... Are you serious, monsieur? I thought your interest in psychic detection was purely academic. Academic? You are about to witness a scientific breakthrough. Excuse me, mademoiselle? Hi, my name is George Stobart. Oh, an American by the sound of it. Yeah, that's right, on holiday in Paris. Some holiday, huh? You were here when the bomb went off? Sure was. Sat right out front of the cafe. Did you notice a middle-aged man, maybe 60, with an hat and overcoat? I couldn't believe it. She hadn't even asked how I was feeling. Yeah, he went inside, just before the bomb exploded. You weren't related to him, were you? Oh no, nothing like that. I am Nicole Collard from La Liberté. Well, what's that, some kind of nightclub? Uh, no, it is a newspaper. You're a reporter? I'm a freelance photojournalist. Say, you can interview me about the bombing. You know, an eyewitness account. Minutes after the outrage that shook the whole of Paris. You know, real life drama, human interest, that kind of stuff. I'll just stick to the facts, thank you. Did you see who planted the bomb? I know it sounds crazy, but he was dressed like a clown. Oh God, it's him again. Have you met the clown before? It's a long story. I have plenty of time. I don't. Who's the guy you were supposed to meet? His name was Planter. I didn't know him, but he called me last night. He said he had a story which would interest me. He asked me to meet him at the cafe. I guess I'll never know what he wanted to tell me. Uh, not unless you have Rosso's gift for psychic interrogation. Why won't you tell me about this clown? Why do you want to get involved? Because he almost killed me. Isn't that reason enough? I guess so. Listen, I'll give you my phone number. You help me with my story and I'll let you in on what I know. And let's get one thing straight right now. This is strictly business. Okay, it's a deal. I have to go develop these pictures. I'll be on tour, monsieur. Fine, I'll uh, see you soon. Hi, can you spare a few minutes? I thought you'd been arrested! No, it was a misunderstanding. When he pulled that gun, gah, I thought that was it. Those automatics by quad a punch, you know? He made a mistake. He thought I was a terrorist. You? A terrorist? Ha! He was only doing his duty, I guess. Would you like to read my newspaper? I haven't got time to read that. Can't you see I'm busy? You could read it on your lunch break. Ten minutes is all I get. And if my boss had his way, I wouldn't get that. He'd have me on a drip, so I didn't have to stop to eat. Oh, take the newspaper and quit complaining. Bah! Look at this! Damn bleeding out liberals! Cha! Save the dolphins! Catch them and eat them, I say! All that fuss over a bunch of fish! Nah, that's more like it! Look at the size of those! Like champagne bottle corks, no? Ah, what's this? Saladin running in the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe! It's a racehorse? A horse? A legend! Bucephalus reborn, mon ami! Like a streak of lightning she is! Do me a favor, won't you? 
keep an eye on my hole. I'm off to put some money on that nag. It was a battered metal toolbox. I found a T-shaped tool in the box. I didn't know what it was, but it looked useful. I lifted the cover to reveal what smelt like the entrance to a sewer. As I picked up the plastic ball, I realized it was intended to be worn. It was the clown's red nose. I scooped up the sodden tissue. It was cold and greasy, like breakfast leftovers. I took hold of the scrap of material and unsnagged it from the spike. Got you. What are you talking about? You're trespassing. Come out of there immediately. That's what I'm trying to do. Give me your hand. Ha! You won't catch me with tricks like that. Keep your distance, monsieur. Okay, okay. Now, what were you looking for? I was looking for a clown. Huh, ridiculous. Do you really expect me to believe that? He planted a bomb in the cafe and blew it up. What? The cafe? Blown up? Mon Dieu! That is awful. And you say the person responsible was dressed as a clown? That's right. He blew up the cafe, escaped into the sewer, changed his clothes, and came up here. Ah, mon dieu! And then, the man I chased. Do you think that man and the clown are one and the same? Well, yes, it had crossed my mind. Ah, that still does not explain what you are doing down the sewer. For all I know, you are in league with him. Oh no, I'm just a tourist. Haha, <laughs> most tourists are content with the Eiffel Tower. The Louvre or the Pigalle. I didn't realize my waste pipes were such an attraction. Perhaps you'd like to take a look at my card? Mm-hmm. 
What is this? Inspecteur Augustin Rousseau? What does that say? Hominoid division? A homicide. I think the ink's smudged. Mm -hmm. Then you are not a tourist. Okay, I'm not. I lied to you. And I'm sorry. Don't apologize, monsieur. You know, I had a feeling there was something different about you. It is your posture, your, your poise. Oh, yes. There is no mistaking the bearing of a, a disciplined man. And uh, I should know. I was in the army, you know. When I was your age, I was fighting for my life in the African desert. Uh, how can I help you, Inspector? Let's start over from the beginning and tell it just like it was. Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> he was a mean one, monsieur. He grabbed me in an arm lock, his face suddenly next to mine. His grip was like iron, but he did not know what he was up against. Oh no, he made a big mistake when he took on one of the desert hyenas. Yes, yes, I get the picture. Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? So you don't want to hear about my experiences in the desert? I fought to make this country what it is today. I'm sure you did, but I'm a little short of time. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? <sighs> you, you, you can't suspect her, ah, surely. Just answer the question, please. Yes, uh, I know her. Quite well, you could say. Uh, she came to work at the cafe oh, uh, six, uh, seven months ago. I look forward all week to the relief she gives me when she visits. Really? So you'd miss her if she wasn't there? Oh, <laughs> mais oui! Who else would I find to cut my toenails? Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Why, yes, he was. Clutched in his arms like a baby. That belonged to his victim. Oh, what do you think was in it? Drugs? Stolen jewels? I don't know, but the killer thought it was worth a man's life. <laughs> Nothing is worth that, monsieur. Does this piece of material mean anything to you? Ah, that is the same cloth as the jacket I found. I'd recognize that pattern anywhere. Now, about the jacket you found. Do you have it here? No, monsieur. One of the sleeves was badly torn, so I sent it for repair. <laughs> a pity, because otherwise it was a fine piece of quality tailoring. It had the tailor's name inside on the label. Where did you send the jacket? I gave it to an itinerant Romani seamstress. Just my luck. Was there anything in the jacket pockets? Mm -hmm. Not a sou. You know what I think? Do tell me. Mm -hmm. He changed out of the clown suit and cunningly disguised himself as an ordinary person. Hmm. Looks like I'm up against a mastermind. What was the name on the label? Ah, it was a foreign name. Todrick, I think. Did you get the address? There wasn't one, monsieur. Only a telephone number. Well, I don't expect you to remember a phone number you've only seen once. 74 59 You're kidding. That's his phone number? Yes, that is. I need a secret number that I learned in the desert. I was taught the technique by a Tuareg shaman. That's incredible. <laughs> it comes in handy at the supermarket checkout. Uh, do I get a reward? Honesty, monsieur, is its own reward. Then I'm glad I do not rely on honesty to pay the bills. I have to be going. Thanks to your help. The citizens of Paris can sleep a little easier tonight. Raymond, I was only doing my duty, monsieur. Good luck, Inspector. I hope you catch that killer soon. I'll let you out.
Bonjour, couleur. Oh, hi. It's George Stobart, the American at the cafe. Ah, oh, oui. Uh, you said to call if I could help. Have you any news for me? You bet. I met a witness who spoke to the clown. And I know where the killer gets his suits. No kidding. Hey, I'm impressed. You are? Well, it wasn't easy. Look, why don't you come here to my apartment? Fine. Where do you live? 361 Rue Jarry. Okay, I'll come right over. I pushed against the door, but it seemed to be locked. Oh, hi! Bonjour, monsieur. Would you like me to foretell your future? Uh, no thanks. I'm very good, and it only takes a minute. Thanks all the same, but I'm not superstitious. Besides, if it only takes a minute, that's not much of a future to look forward to. Do you know a young woman called Nicole Collard? Yes, I do. She lives upstairs from me, in the apartment block across the street. I tried the door, but it's locked. You know, I've told the landlord about that a million times. It is the damp. The whole building is like a sponge. It sucks up the moisture from... God knows where. You mean the door is stuck because it's swollen? That is correct. There is an art to opening it. Don't shove it hard. Just give it a gentle nudge above the lock. Thanks for the advice. See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. Remembering the flower seller's advice, I pushed the door gently, just above the lock. Bonjour. I am glad you could make it, monsieur. Please, call me George. Fine. I am Nicole. Take a seat, George. Eh bien? And what have you been up to? I've been exploring the sewers beneath the cafe. I thought I could smell something bad. The clown used the sewer to escape and to change out of his costume. I guess he was in a hurry. He left his jacket behind. And? I got his tailor's phone number. You had better luck than I did. Luck, she said. Luck! Hard work, I'd call it. What happened? I took my photographs to the editor, but he wasn't interested. Can you believe it? He told me to drop the story. But you're not about to do that. Oh, no. I am going to find out what's behind these killings. You know what I think? It's a conspiracy. The police in three different countries have kept very quiet about the murders. The press don't connect them at all. They blame them on political, religious, or militant minority extremists. Well, that covers just about everyone. How did Plantau get your name? Through the newspaper, La Liberté. I had written an article linking two unsolved murders, one in Italy and the other in Japan. The cases were remarkably similar. A wealthy victim, no apparent motive, and a costume killer. Plantau said he could supply me with more information. Somehow, the clown must have known about our appointment. Tell me more about the clown's previous victims. The first was Arnaud Bellotta, the millionaire pharmaceutical baron. He made his money from amphetamines in the post-war slimming and diet boom. Imagine it! Millions of housewives literally speeding their butts off. Was he killed for his money? No. He had no living relatives, 
and his 14 went to the orphanage where he got up. The only witness in the case was his Filipino au pair. She swears he was led to his death by a snowman. What about the clown's second victim? Yamada, the controversial Japanese clean politician. He inherited his fortune from his father's electrochemical consortium. He was committed to dismantling Japan's automobile industry. I can't see him gaining much support with a loony policy like that. Yamada was a man of vision. He was years ahead of his time. If you say so, how did he die? At the end, or should I say, flippers of a giant emperor penguin. A snowman, a penguin, and now a clown. You know, I hate to admit it, but this is scary. And I'll tell you what, I won't be accepting any invitations to costume parties. I don't blame you for being scared. I am too. But this story could be my only chance of a big break. Or a premature death. You speak very good English for a French girl. Thanks. You speak very good English from America. May I use your telephone? Sure, go ahead. Thanks. Hello? Who is this? Hi. My name's George Stobart. You don't know me. Correct, Mr. Stobart. I don't. What can I do for you? Well, I'm trying to trace one of your customers. Could I maybe come over and talk to you? No. No. That's not possible. Oh, okay. Uh, forget it. Listen, all I want is a name. What are you talking about? Who are you working for? I guess you might say I'm acting in the interests of truth and justice. Ah, oh, thank God. I thought you were the police. There are innocent lives at stake, Mr. Todrick. Lives that you could save. You're collecting for charity, yes? No, I'm not. All I want from you is information. Go on. I'm listening. Do you know a guy called Plantar? No, I never heard of him. Shall I tell you what happened to Plantar? How he was killed in cold blood? I told you, I never heard of Plantar. I expect Plantar's a family man, don't you? In their little apartment, Madame Plantar is cooking the supper, listening for the familiar sound of her husband's key in the door. Junior is waiting for his daddy to come home from work. He can't wait to show him the merit marks he earned in school today. Only tonight? Monsieur Plantar won't be coming home. You forgot the puppy. Huh? The faithful puppy dog, waiting for the sound of his master's voice. Well, maybe they don't have a dog. What do you think? I don't know Plantar. I never heard of Plantar. None of this has anything to do with me. What do you know about the clown who bombed the Café de la Chandelle Vert? I don't have no idea what you're talking about. You're cool, Todrick. But I think you know more than you're saying. I don't know who you be, but sure I am, you don't know what you're talking about. I don't know if you're saying that to make me think you don't know what I mean, but... Oh, this is ridiculous. Quit playing games with me, Todrick. I tell you, I know nothing about no clown. Did you know that one of your customers was a part-time clown? If a guy feels happy with a funny nose and custard down his pants, what's the problem? Thanks for nothing, Todrick. I found this false nose in the sewer. He was this inside it. The contents of someone's nose? Don't be cross, George. It says La Rise du Monde. Masks and costumes. It's a costume shop near the Gare Saint Lazare. I'll check it out. Maybe the owner remembers who hired the clown costume. Why don't you put it on, Joe? No way am I wearing this. I look really stupid. Besides, you might have had a cold. I found this tissue down the sewer. Oh, poor, that's disgusting, Georges. I think the stuff on it is grease paint, like actors use, or clowns. It's still disgusting. Get rid of it. 
I found a piece of material near the cafe. When I showed it to the concierge, he recognized it right away. He's sorry to think you've all right. Just wait until you see this. I developed the film I shot at the cafe. Here, George, it's an enlargement I made. Look what that guy's wearing. Checkered pants. The same material as I found in the sewer. That's right. This guy shouldn't be difficult to find. Oh, no? Take a close look at his left cheek. A scar in the shape of a horseshoe. Oh, a crescent moon. How come you enlarged this photograph of me? Because I noticed the guy behind you, of course. Tell me more about yourself. Oh, there is not much to tell. Well, how did you get into photography? I guess I owe that to my father. He bought my first camera. I was eight and my parents had just split up. Did you live with your father? Yes, my mother went off with her new boyfriend. I don't mind. Papa was all I needed. Four years later, he died in a plane crash. Ah, I'm sorry. Well, it's all right. I don't mind talking about him. He was more like an older brother, really. Always joking and laughing. Papa always wanted I should study art. That's why I went to college. Did you learn about photography at college? Oh, God, no. I couldn't afford the materials. We were billed for everything we used. Paint, canvas, paper. Most of my year turned to minimalism. It was cheaper. I used to go poaching in the park for squirrel hair. The only time I wasn't hungry was the term I did printing. I used to eat the potatoes. You're making fun of me, aren't you? Oh, no. Do you have a boyfriend? That's none of your business. I'm going back out to search for that clown. Where? I guess I could visit the costume shop. Good idea. 